Okay, so if you're a buyer, seller, investor, or just somebody that's been sitting on the sidelines watching what has been happening with the real estate market over the last few years, you would know that it has been an absolute roller coaster ride. It has been absolutely crazy. I'm an agent here in Boston, Massachusetts, and what we saw from the years of 2019 to 2020, 2019 was setting up to be a monumental year for price appreciation for condos in the city. 2019 was explosive, so 2020 could have been a huge setup for even more appreciation. Obviously, the pandemic happened. If you follow my channel, not gonna touch on this too much, Pandemic happened, we saw depreciation, then heading into the end of 2022, into 2023, that recovery of condo sales in Boston and that depreciation started to come back. And I believe we actually surpassed what the end of 2019 was in terms of the median and average sale price for a condo in the city. Now, what happened in 2022, which even slowed this progression of appreciation further, in my opinion, was when the Fed started to raise the rates. They wanted to slow down the market and they wanted to stop the somewhat volatile market that we had because again, there were certain states, certain cities that just saw this mega appreciation. You know, some areas appreciated four times what they normally would year over year. So they really needed to figure out a way to slow things down. But here in the Boston area where Anywhere around this city, around the city of Boston, in the greater Boston area, we always had a lot of competition, especially over the last five to seven years. There's always been a lot of competition because of inventory issues, all right? There's only so much space to build. And yes, new places are coming up here and there, uh, but it's very hard to actually get permitting and some projects take years from the time that they start to the time that they finish. So some years we'll have like these mega spikes in home prices because there's a whole bunch of new condos on the market. And then some years, not so much, all right? But what I wanna talk to you about in today's video is how to really prepare or start preparing for 2024 to be fresh and to plan out what you're going to do in order to either buy, sell, or do both in this crazy market. So back in April, May of 2022, the Fed started to raise rates. And while it did slow the market down in terms of how many sales there were, it also created a lack of inventory. And what ends up happening is when you don't have inventory and you still have a monumental amount of buyers, it creates volatility in the market, irregardless of what the interest rates are, okay? If the rates decided to go up to a 10, there would still be people buying homes. There would obviously be less people buying homes, but there would also be even less homes for sale because a lot of people need to sell in order to buy. And they're not going to get into something where they're paying substantially more for less house than what they're at now. So they're waiting on the sidelines. That's really what we've been seeing all throughout 2023. So when the Fed decided to raise those rates, it still affected the appreciation of homes because there was not enough inventory here and there's still not enough inventory here. As a matter of fact, year over year, from October of 2022 to October of 2023, the year that we're in right now, there has been over 10% appreciation for both condos and single family home sales in the Boston and greater Boston area. That is over 10%. To put things into perspective, most markets appreciate at around a three to 5% year over year, both for single family home sales and condo sales. We're more than double that, all right? We're more than double that. So every single time the Fed has increased the rates, less and less inventory has come on the market but you really only need two people to try to buy the same home in order to jack the price up because now they're bidding against each other. And that inevitably creates a higher sale price for that property because you have two people that want the same exact product. So while the Fed's intentions uh, were good and it definitely slowed some markets down, I know Austin, I have some realtor friends out there in Austin, Texas, they saw mega appreciation. Now it's really starting to slow down and scale back. And I'm sure there's other parts of the country as well that saw that mega appreciation that is starting to pull back. But here in Eastern Massachusetts, especially around the Boston area, a lot of these neighborhoods, a lot of these towns, a lot of these suburbs are still seeing high appreciation rates because 
because of the lack of inventory. So for planning out 2024, how does that affect you? Now, I want you to consider this, okay? You know that higher rates are bringing less inventory. Higher rates also reduce the amount of buyers. As a matter of fact, for every quarter point that a rate goes up, 1,250,000 buyers get knocked out of being able to potentially purchase a home across the country. That's 1.25 million for every quarter point increase, okay? That is 0.25% for your mortgage rate, all right? So for every one total point, that is 5 million people that get knocked out of buying a home. So we saw rates go from sub three all the way up to seven. So potentially 20 million plus people got knocked out of the market to buy a home. But there is still appreciation because there is still a lot of people looking to buy a home. There was still a lot of pent up buyers that have been waiting to buy a home for a long time. A lot of people were waiting for a market crash. A lot of people were waiting for price depreciation and it just never happened. And the pandemic obviously accelerated the appreciation rate for many of these homes. Now, something to consider is this, if you're buying a home or thinking about buying a home in the end of 2023 here or in 2024, I'm telling you right now to be prepared. If you're one of those people that are sitting on the sideline, you're waiting for something to happen, you're waiting for some sort of economic downturn or some form of recession where the housing market just tumbles, I really don't think that's going to happen. I don't foresee any indication of a recession where housing prices are going to pull back and the entire market is going to tumble. I just don't see that happening. And when you're planning things out and you're going to potentially purchase and or sell, use that number I provided to you as a major metric, okay? For every quarter point a mortgage reduces, there's going to be 1.25 million more buyers that are entering the market, okay? But that does not necessarily translate to sellers. So take that in consideration. If we see mortgage rates drop from a seven to a six, there is going to be five million more buyers that are entering the market across the country. There's going to be more buyer competition. It is still a seller's market. If we have more buyers enter the market, it's going to get more competitive and that 10 plus percent appreciation rate that we saw for condos and single family homes year over year from October of 2022 to October of 2023 could potentially be even greater. And here's why. Inventory. That is the biggest piece of the puzzle, and that is something that the Fed just cannot directly control. We just do not have enough inventory, not only throughout this whole country, but in Eastern Massachusetts. Homes are on top of each other here already. A lot of communities, a lot of areas that are getting some new development, you know, people are pissed off, but they wanna have low tax rates, but they're upset that there's condos coming. Look, we need places for people to live. If there's jobs that support the people that are moving into Massachusetts, guess what? Builders have to do what is necessary in order to accommodate people that want to move here and live here. Everybody should have an opportunity to move around the country and provide for their families and provide a better life, a better lifestyle, whatever they want, depending on where they want to go. OK, so here's the thing. Come 2024, you need to have a game plan together on what you're planning on doing. All right. Don't be one of these people that is waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for rates to come down because the more people that are waiting for those rates to come down, incrementally, you're having 1.25 million buyers enter the market every quarter point it gets reduced, okay? Now, I'm not saying rates are gonna go down to a six or a five. As a matter of fact, the prediction is perhaps in two years will be six, maybe sub six, but this is all speculation. So the moral of the story is this. If you're preparing for 2024, you don't know what to do. My advice, and I will always continue to give this advice, is always make a sound financial purchase for yourself and your family, especially if it's going to be a major, major lifestyle upgrade or lifestyle change. Now, there's three major things I want to talk to you about, about planning to buy a home in 2024. The first being how long you plan on living in the home. If you plan on selling this home in a short amount of time, I think that's more dangerous than somebody that is perhaps maybe on their second or third home, and they're gonna be there for quite some time. The statistic goes like this. Most people will sell their home within their first six to eight years, give or take a year or two here or there, okay? 
So if you plan on being in your home for six, seven plus years, I think it's a pretty safe bet. As long as you're considering your finances, I think that you will be in okay shape. And that's the second part of this is don't overextend yourself, all right? The market is up and down, but ultimately it is still increasing. The only thing that's changing more rapidly than the price is going up is where the rates are, all right? And trying to debate or plan where the rates are gonna be and plan this and plan that. Buy something where you're comfortable with your monthly payments. Buy something that makes sense to you. Yes, you're getting much less house than you could have gotten in the last two plus years. That's a reality. That is not going to change. Nothing is going to flip the market from a seller's market, which I believe we're still in here in Eastern Massachusetts, to a buyer's market. It is not going to happen. At least I don't think it's going to happen. It's not something that just happens overnight. It just doesn't happen overnight. It happens incrementally, okay? So plan it out. Plan out your finances. Make sure that you're in an okay position for either yourself or your family. Don't overextend your budget in order to get into something that you really love. With that being said, the third thing is buy something that you really love. Find something that's going to make sense for either you or your family. If it makes sense financially and the rates are perhaps at an area where you're comfortable and you know you're going to be in the property for a long time, at least five, maybe to seven years, affordability is not going to improve overnight. It's also not going to improve over the next six months. It's also not gonna improve over the next year, okay? Housing prices statistically always increase. Yes, a market could go from a seller's market to a buyer's market, but it does not happen overnight. It happens over the course of multiple, multiple years, all right? But what happens is by the time it's a buyer's market, you've seen years of appreciation and growth. So would you rather buy during a point where you're getting in on that appreciation or would you rather buy at perhaps the peak of appreciation and then perhaps start to see some depreciation, all right? That is something to consider. If you buy today, irregardless of what the rates are doing, there has been a steady increase of price appreciation. If you bought a year ago, you would have already been up 10% on your purchase. The median home price here in Eastern Massachusetts for a single family home is around $750,000. Add 10% on that if you bought it from a year ago, okay? You'd be doing pretty good, right? So don't try to time the market. Make it make sense for you and your family. There's two things that decreased rates are gonna bring. Number one is obviously a lot more buyers, okay? Number two is more borrowing power for you. Obviously, why there's more buyers into the market. But what it's not going to bring is an influx of new listings. It's just not going to happen. Statistically, based on the research that I have done, there's going to be two sets of buyers that are entering into the market. Number one is first time home buyers. All right, that is gonna be the number one home buyer for 2024. The number two home buyer for 2024 is going to be people that needed to sell their home or wanted to sell their home. But what happens is if somebody is selling their home and they're also buying a home, you're still at a net zero of new inventory coming on the market because they're, yes, putting a home on the market, but they're also taking a home off of the market. One of the most crazy statistics that I have seen happen with these interest rate increases is that time on market has actually decreased year over year, meaning homes are selling faster today than they were selling a year ago. The reason that is, is because there was a lot of uncertainty a year ago in the market, all right? Once rates start to level off at any certain point and the public realizes, okay, this is where rates are gonna be at, I need to do something, I need to make a decision. And if they fluctuate, you know, 0 0.10 or 0.25, here or there, they're going up and down. Once a buyer or potential seller sees that minor fluctuation and it starts to level out, that's when they start to act. And that's really what has happened over the last year. Because I remember back in 2022, where people were just super hesitant, rates kept on going up and up and up, and they were thinking, oh, they're gonna eventually come down, down, down. And that just never happened. I just wanna end with this. It's really hard to time the market, but there's one statistic that I go over with all of my clients, whether they be buyers or sellers, all right? And this is something that has been consistent throughout time, and that is the quarter that you buy in. Statistically, 
Q2 and Q3 are the high points of the market. That is when, obviously, the most inventory comes on as well, all right, and the majority of sales happen there. But that's also where we see the most appreciation happen is between Q2 and Q3. As a matter of fact, sometimes Q3 could even start to go down a little bit closer to the end of Q3. But then Q4, which we're in now heading into 2024, and then Q1 of 2024. My opinion, as I said probably in previous videos before, it's still going to potentially be the best time to buy a home. Less people want to move in the wintertime, all right? They just don't want to move, especially here in New England. They don't want to have to move, deal with the snow, deal with traffic, holiday traffic, this, that, or the other thing. It sucks, okay? It does. It sucks. But you could get a good deal. There's a lot of places that have been sitting on the market. They've accumulated time on market, and that's what you need to focus on. Just because a place has been sitting on the market does not mean it's a bad place to move into or there's something wrong with it or they had an inspection and the foundation is crumbling. It could just mean that at this certain point in time in this certain neighborhood or suburb that nobody wants to buy this property. All right. And maybe that's where you come in. All right. You take a look at it. You get an inspection because it's had time on market. You're not going to have to do anything crazy like wave inspections. And then you take advantage of that. All right. So Q4 and Q1 is the advantage time for a buyer in the market that we're in. It is the best time to get a deal statistically. And there's still a lot of inventory that comes on in Q4 and Q1, obviously not as much as Q2 and Q3, but there's more opportunity for buyers in this market. The other thing to consider here is that by the time rates decrease, okay, homes are not gonna become more affordable, all right? As a matter of fact, they're gonna be less affordable because if you wait six months from today, the comparables that are closing today that are going to be used in the future in three months, in six months, are going to pump up the price of whatever property that you're looking for. So it's going to be a balancing act of what the rate is and whatever the appreciation was starting today onto the next three, six, nine months because those properties in the future are potentially going to be 10% more than they are today. So you need to weigh those things. You need a good lender and you need somebody that is on your side that could tell you the facts, tell you the truth and give you some expert professional guidance based on two things. Number one is data and number two is experience. Thanks for watching the video, guys. My name is Mike Urban. I am a local real estate agent here in Boston, Massachusetts. Down in the description below, I have multiple ways to get in touch with me if you have any questions at all, how to get pre-approved, who to use, what to look at, what to buy, what neighborhood, what suburb. I will help guide you through that entire process. Now, I made a video about a week ago about how buyers' closing costs may end up being higher in 2024. You can watch that right up here. Thanks, guys. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.